Lost Spirits Distilleries. They made that umami and also the fire dancer. Well, they also did the Bohemian Bonfire, American single malt, heavily peated. Watch and find out how good it really is. Hi, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. And today I have the Bohemian Bonfire Heavily Peated American Single Malt from Lost Spirits Distillery. So I've had the Umami and I've had the Fire Dancer. Now I finally get to taste the Bohemian Bonfire. Brian Davis and Joanne Hauruta used to actually um, distill gin in Barcelona, Spain. They moved back to California in Salinas and they started becoming artisan distillers. They've done some weird stuff. Um, and one of the things they've done is to make single malt American whiskey. Most of us know bourbon, 51% corn. Most of us know single malt whiskey, for example, Bruchladig, from Scotland, which is 100% malted barley. Most of us have never had single malt American whiskey. Ta-da! 59%, 80 to 90 ppm, non-chilled filtered, and it was actually also finished in French oak casks. They do not, for example, with um, Glen Breton in Canada, they took, um, did they take? I think they took. <laughs> they, um, Scottish peat, I know that in Japan they did that. They actually bought Scottish peat, shipped it over Japan and used that um, to roast and to um, dry their um, malted barley. Here in California, they decided to go to Canada, and there they bought the peat. And so it's a different type of peat. It's not as much um, iodine in there as maybe, let's say, um, Lagavulin or a Lafroic might have. So, let's have a nose. I would never, and I mean never believe that this stuff is from America. It really, really does smell like something from Scotland. Um, for example, as I showed, the Bruchladdich. So I have a Bruchladdich. Um, this is the classic Laddie, which means it's an unpeated Isle single malt, single malt Scotch whiskey. And what they do is uh, once a year they um, clean the plant they clean the entire distilling area and they get rid of all of the peat tinnus. And so this has one of the first new batches on the clean machines without any peat. But yet there's still a little bit of peat in there. 8, 10 ppms. Here, 80 to 90. And they smell... They smell like cousins. <laughs> now, um, they're both single malts. They're both very, very good. I have already done the, the, the German video, and what I said is um, sometimes when I smell something, I see colors. I see bright yellow and dark red and orange and so on, especially with bourbons. And what I had here was I actually had a pitch. And the pitch of the um, Bohemian... Um, Bonfire was more of a high-pitched la, sorry, and the Bruchladi was more of a la, and that's what I get here in the nose. It's a much deeper, solid type of smell, and this is a little bit of a higher-pitched, I called it more of a pineapple, um, more of a caramel type of nose. Now, I'm going to compare them as well. Here we have 50% alcohol by volume, ABV. 
Here we have 59%. So it's getting up there, to be honest. Nothing like the um, barrel proof of Elijah Craig with 69% or the the um, has um, with 70-some percent. But still, non-chilled filter, excellent, excellent nose. I've said this before, and I really do believe that the best grain in the world for making whiskey is malted barley. Sorry. The second best grain is rye. I love my rye. And the third best would be corn, and then maybe wheat, and so on. We do a lot of grain whiskeys, especially in Scotland, and it's just wheat. They distill it up to 80, 85 percent, put it in the cask, just let it sit there for 12, 16, 20 years. I actually have a grain over here. Um, I think I've showed it already once before. Um, it's a 50, 50, five zero, a 50-year-old blended grain Scotch whiskey, the Cooper's Choice. This stuff is just honey in your mouth. Um, but 50 years ago, it was bottled, I thought it was barreled, and then 2016, they basically just bottled, bottled it. Amazing stuff. But it's all the wood in there. And so here, we actually still have the real juice, that malted barley, which has been distilled two times, triple, uh, t double distilled there, just like the Bruchladig also is in the Isle. There's a little bit more peat here, but not much. Every single time, I forget, it's 59%. This stuff is great. It's sweet. Oh, it's a little bit of smoke is in there. But I don't like smoke. I don't like smoked Smoke PD type of whiskeys. The worst whiskey, the worst, the worst bourbon I've ever had was um, from um, Balcones, the Brimstone. That stuff is like burnt tires in my mouth. I hate it. But this stuff is really, really good. Mm, I'm going to give it a B plus. Wow. 59% and I just, no problem. Mm, it's a little bit hot, but hey, let it sit. Put a little bit of water if you want, like in there. It gets um, a little bit sharper, a little bit peppery, and the smoke comes out a little bit more with too much water. Bruchladig, just as a comparison. <laughs> in the mouth, they're almost at the beginning the same. Then the heat cut kicks in here, and over here what we have is at the end. The aftertaste. I have cask. I have old wood. I have tannins. I have something in my mouth which is astringent. It really shouldn't be there. And it takes away. The beginning is just wonderful. And there's a, a just a hint of peat in there. And then this cask at the end just takes over and just kind of makes this wonderful experience a little less wonderful. Here, I don't have any of that. Actually, at the end, it just goes up in quality, and it just really just makes it better. Over here in Germany, we're going to pay about 70 euros, which would be about almost $80. I have no idea if you can find this in the States, where you can find it, I hope in California. If you take a look at lostspirits.net, that's the website of um, the Lost Spirits Distillery in Salinas, um, California, from Brian Davis and Joanne Aruta. It's not on sale. It's sold out. You can't get it anymore. Um, over here in Germany, the, the whiskey cask, one word, dot .de, has it on sale. Has it still offered for 70 euros, as I said. But it's good, good stuff. This little thing here, I just bought. I think I, I paid 5 euros, 5 dollars for this. And so I have, a, I have a liter price of like 200 dollars. But I didn't want the whole bottle. And um, I'm very happy to have that little sample. Mmm, very good stuff. Oh. All right, um, is it worth it? Yes. I'm going to give it actually a C plus. So B plus in taste, C plus on price. It's really unique. It's an American single malt peated whiskey. And it's not even that much peat that it 
makes my taste buds shiver. It's exactly a little bit of support and it's what it should be. Brian Davis, thank you very much. You produce an excellent, excellent American single malt. I haven't had a single malt in America uh, um, that has so convinced me that it's possible to do that in the States just like they've done for hundreds of years in Scotland. Thank you very much. Amazing. The artisan slash engineer slash distiller, Brian Davis, you are unbelievable. Thank you. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of American. The next video is going to be about another um, Lost Spirits um, release. Calafia. Also a heavily pe peated American single malt. I'm very much looking forward to that. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them below. What was your best American single malt? Have you ever had one? Write it in the comments. That would interest me. Anyone else doing that except for the guys out in, um, in um, Seattle, Washington at Westland, I think it's called. Um, I know they're doing it. And anyone else in America? Who knows? Write it down in the comments. See you then. Bye-bye.